فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله تبارك الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We always praise the Almighty who created us and who provides for us who is in control of every aspect of our existence We also send blessings and salutations upon those He has chosen and sent to us to guide us Starting with Muhammad Wasallam and all the other messengers who were sent as well as their companions, and may Allah make us the best of companions for one another. And may Allah bless every one of us and our offspring, those to come right up to the end, and keep us all steadfast and filled with hope. My brothers and sisters, I'm delighted to see this beautiful venue. Uh, I think it's my first time in this part of London, right? And inshallah, it won't be the last. But I'm here this evening to share with you a short message. Subhanallah, they asked me how long are you going to speak for? And I said, well, didn't you set that? And they said, no, you have to decide. So I thought I'll let you decide, inshallah. So the minute I see the first person yawning, inshallah, I will. <laughs> I will stop by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you and I know that across the globe, we're going through a lot of negativity. And we navigate through that negativity in a way that we feel is most suitable according to our own situation and understanding. Each person looks at problems from a different angle, with a different light, with a different mindset, with a different understanding, with a different capacity as well. Based on many factors, we actually look at these matters. Some of us make them worse and some of us actually uh, ignore them totally and some of us deal with them in a way that helps others as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the last one. Because my brothers and sisters, today, what is of utmost importance is while navigating through the problems of this world, if we would help others, it would make it easy for us. If I am going through challenges in my life and I reach out to you, I definitely will feel better. I begin to realize how small my problems are as compared to those who have major disasters in their lives and they still have the capacity or they still have that smile on their faces and they have a good attitude and that hope because hope is something that every one of us needs no matter what you're going through. Just like when there is a storm and there is wind, just like when there is snow and the snow is a lot, just like when there are waves and the waves are very, very choppy. You and I know that there is hope deep down that this is not going to last. It's going to come to an end. The darkest hour of the night is always followed by the crack of dawn and the daybreak. So what you and I need to know is no matter what you're going through, it is only temporary. After all, life itself is very temporary. It's very short. I met a brother yesterday who told me at the motivational evening we had, that he is stage four cancer and he sat with us. And later that night, somehow we got in touch with each other. And his son told me we've rushed him to hospital. He's had severe pains and please make dua for him. And I'm thinking to myself, I just told him so much. And I tried my best to make him feel so positive. But what you and I need to know is... Even if our condition is deteriorating, you need to look at the positives through your belief in the Almighty. Because I promise you, the Almighty has definitely said, if you were to bear patience, if you were to actually, through your sadness, find reason to smile, through your sadness, find reason to be reassured, then the Almighty says, you haven't lost everything. There are some people who lose this worldly life, perhaps, but they have not lost the akhirah, they have not lost the hereafter, because their positivity, right up to the end, kept them in such conviction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy, His goodness, His kindness, 
And they knew that even if we were to die in the process, and it's something none of us would like to do, but, but we all have to go through it. Even if we were to die, if you died in a condition where you had led a decent, reasonable life, you tried your best, the Almighty knows that He will be happy and He definitely will give you a great reward. So I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, keep trying. Don't let anyone tell you that there's all doom and gloom ahead. No matter how gloomy it may seem, trust me, you in the UK know exactly what it feels like when winter comes in and suddenly you have a day when they told you it's really going to be so gloomy and the sun shines. Mashallah. When I came here last week, I was told, bring your jackets, make sure you're warm, bring your hats, bring everything. And trust me, as I landed, I saw the sun. I said, what were they talking about? What were they talking about? I went up north, they told me the same thing. When I arrived there, I said, what were you guys talking about? I came back here today and I see the same thing. It felt like summer for a while, didn't it? That's the blessing of Allah. It's Allah showing you, do you know what? People can predict, people can say, yes, we do have experts. They might be correct sometimes when it comes to the weather based on their expertise. Not that, that, they, that they are prophesizing something superstitiously, but they are actually basing it on some knowledge that they have of the study of weather and the patterns of weather. But they will tell you that it's not a 100% guarantee. And this is why a believer always says, inshallah, tomorrow the weather is going to be this and the weather is going to be that. Chances are, perhaps it may. And chances are... It may not. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us good weather in our lives. So my brothers and sisters, those from amongst you who are struggling in one way or another, I'm not going to say raise your hands because if I were to say that, I would have to start with my own hands. Subhanallah. It's part of life. We all have our struggles. But in those struggles, trust me, the Almighty has promised us a graph that will be going upwards even with the little dips that we have. Take a look at your life 10 years back, your life perhaps 20 years back, those of you who are slightly older, your life 30, 40 years back, and take a look at your life today. I guarantee you the graph has gone up. You are in a better position than you were. But you know what? We're sad. We're depressed. We're upset. We feel so let down. But hang on. I remember a time when I was young, when we only wore hand-me-downs. You know, we, sh we waited for our brother's feet to grow. and We actually made dua that they grew so that we could have those lovely shoes before they developed little holes. They were repaired thereafter and we still used them with a smile, subhanAllah. I remember the first watch I had was a citizen. And where did I get it from? My elder brother. When he got another one, I got his. And that was so, so good. I'm sure there are people on earth who still have hand-me-downs, perhaps maybe the majority of the inhabitants of the globe, if we were to look at it numbers-wise. And they would be happy and delighted to have your leftovers. And we who don't have leftovers are so sad. Subhanallah. Sometimes we don't appreciate something we have. Come on. If you take a look, a careful look at the Blessings of Allah. He has favored you. He has made you today better than you were 20 years back, 10 years back. Ask your father, your forefathers, a few of them, if you have access to your grandfather, ask him about the conditions he lived in. Sometimes yourself, maybe. And what we have today. But because, you know, I cannot renew my car every year, I'm very sad. Yet, a few years back, I couldn't even afford a car. By the way, it might be better to Uber with the roads of London. May Allah make it easy for us. Finding a parking is not a joke. And paying that congestion fee is getting ridiculous. May Allah make it easy. I am encouraging you to use a vehicle for more than one person. It's something worthwhile. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you and may Allah bless this place that you're living. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace, comfort. May Allah grant us that serenity that we're searching for the contentment that we are so desperately searching for, may Allah give it to us. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, an expression on your face will help you before anyone else. 
an expression on your face, when you become conscious of it, you actually beam it to others to the degree that the Almighty says it's almost a monetary charity. He calls it a sadaqa. Do you know what's a sadaqa? It's a monetary charity generally. But in Islam, it refers to things that are non-monetary sometimes because their value is such that we would term it priceless. It's priceless to smile at someone, to have a good expression even on a day. When subhanallah, you've seen negativity all around you, you've got to smile. You've got to give the hope. You've got to give the courage. We see across the globe people suffering. A lot of it is due to the misdeeds of man. May Allah guide mankind to love one another, to be able to care for one another, to stop whatever bombing and killing is happening across the globe. For whatever reason it is, we believe it's unacceptable. We would love to see solutions. We pray for those solutions. But remember, my brothers and sisters, even in those conditions, there are people who look forward to a brighter day. I met a family of refugees. And they were telling me of their days back in their country of warfare. And how it was upon them to convince their children, their little toddlers and slightly older that you know what better days are to come when they grew up never seeing a good day. They were fortunate that Allah blessed them to emigrate or to move to, to get the asylum they were seeking elsewhere. Safety, a better place. What did they want? All they wanted was a secure, peaceful place. Don't you have that? Thank Allah for it. It's more important than most of what you have. The peace within is of utmost importance. That's number one. Number two is the external peace. This is why when you say Iman, it refers to two things. I'm a mu'min, as we say. I'm a believer. Iman refers to the inner belief. When it is purified and good, it gives you the inner contentment when you understand who the Almighty is, why He made you, and the fact that in a short time, we're going to go back to that maker. That's something people don't like to talk about. We look at it as doom and gloom. I'm here to tell you today, keep trying your best. It's enough. For as long as you're trying your best, don't let the devil come to you and make you feel that heaven or Jannah is not for you. Paradise is not for you. Have you tried? You keep on trying? Have you developed your relationship with your maker? You know, we hear the term in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha. Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum. We hear taqwa Allah so many times. People say the fear of Allah. It's actually the love of Allah. It's actually staying away from the prohibitions of Allah because you love Allah. When you say fear, to fear your maker sometimes could be something that some translate as a negative quality within an individual, although what is meant is positive. So what is the positivity? Taqwa Allahi is such love of Allah that keeps you away from sin and makes you repent every time you have fallen in it, that makes you do good. And makes you regret whenever you haven't done the good. That is taqwa Allah. I like to call it the relationship with Allah. If you have the best possible relationship that you believe you can have today, and you're improving on it as the days pass, trust me, you're heading to Jannah. You're heading to paradise. The Almighty is looking for an excuse to forgive you. I know there are people who say, well, you know what? You've got to warn people about Jahannam. I do know that, yes, there is hellfire. But looking at what's happening across the globe, we are in dire need of hope more than anything else. People are losing faith in God Almighty because they're becoming tired of waiting for something. But I, I promise you, when the Almighty knows it is the right time for you, He definitely will give it to you. If you understand the plan of the Almighty, He holds back what He knows is not good for you. If you are praying for a, a, a Lamborghini and the Almighty knows that perhaps by getting it, you are going to be breaking speed limits and getting a lot of fines and perhaps 12 points on your license or you might be jailed or you might end up in a car crash killing people. Surely it's a gift of the Almighty not to allow you to get to the level where you can even afford one. He spared your life, but He didn't give you a little Lamborghini. Subhanallah. 
I've given you a simple example, but you can take it even in marriage. You desperately want to marry someone. You met them a long time back. You've developed a relationship with them that perhaps was not so pleasing to the Almighty. And you desperately wanted it. And Allah starts creating barriers, one after the other. This has gone wrong. It's not happening. That's gone wrong. It's not happening. You need to keep trying. Yes, indeed. But there comes a point when you need to understand, perhaps the Almighty just doesn't want it. Subhanallah. Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira radiyallahu an he was a powerful companion prior to Islam he was an enemy of Islam he came to Islam one day and he says oh messenger and he was telling the companions as well the same thing every time I fought the Muslims I knew this man here we can never get to him Allah has protected him that was one of the driving forces that drove him to Islam and to realizing you know what this man is definitely a prophet of Allah no matter how much I've tried to harm him something's coming in the way I just can't get it he's just one up ahead of everyone and everything subhanallah the most blessed of creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so surely the same maker who's made us he knows who we are if we're trying you need to be convinced that when he's blocked something and yes within your capacity you tried for as long as it was respectful for as long as it was permissible you need to know you can keep on trying people say i really want to marry this person sorry to give you this example you know but i have to it's happening every day okay i want to marry this person they come from a different race and you know my father's a racist to be honest with you a lot of us are racist maybe maybe perhaps almost all of us in a certain way and we definitely need to resolve that every one of us unfortunately i'm going to say this because it's a bit of a wake up call we feel us our family our people our tribe our our little village back in wherever we come from if we do come from wherever we do is slightly better than the village that's one river across it's something right if we're slightly better than those guys you know those guys are known as this and we say five negative things and as for us we are the angels this is racism this is something that is you can call it whatever you want tribalism whatever else you want and the true believer deals with this because you lose contentment when you become a racist and you don't understand and realize it until you work hard upon yourself you can see a person of a totally different color if you feel the love and you feel the connection you are heading in the right direction you are heading in the right direction the prophet sallallahu tells us none of you can consider yourselves true believers until you love for others what you love for yourself who are the others everyone else whatever color they are wherever they come from it becomes irrelevant you love for others what you love for yourself you're developing your relationship with the almighty how because you're understanding the one who made you made him made her made them common maker if he didn't want them he wouldn't have made them but he made them because he's going to dangle them in front of us wherever and however and how we look at them would determine how we've understood god almighty who made them subhanallah subhanallah this is amazing and this is why i say your your ethnicity your background your village your whatever it is only there for recognition purposes to recognize you that oh this person's identity and that's why allah gave us different faces our faces are not all the same we have different faces here every single one of us would be picked up by someone in fact if we had face recognition we would have known every there will come a time when events if you were to book online you just need to put your face and it picks your face up when you walk there will be no one right in the front as you're walking it recognizes your face and opens the little door and as you go through mashallah you know everything is sorted if you're not recognized you're not going to be going through that's going to be happening by the way mashallah tabarakallah see they're nodding their heads next time inshallah but to be honest it's a favor of allah imagine if we all look the same you know marriage would be in a factory subhanallah this one that one what's the difference well they're all the same let's just go come next 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 and we would go Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. Look at how Allah has blessed us. He's made us different in order for us to be tested. How we feel. And I showed you and I told you how this is connected to your understanding of who the maker is. I want to repeat it. Slightly different wording. Okay. If you see someone who really, really dislikes you. And they've done things to perhaps hurt you maybe. When you look at them. 
Yes, it hurts you as well. And you would feel, I need to be protected from this person. Let's be realistic. Some of us might stay away. Some of us will follow the Quranic injunction and just say, Salam, and, you know, peace, and walk away. Or if you happen to cross paths, Salamu Alaikum, and that's it, may peace be upon you. Why? I don't even want to greet. Well, I tell you why. Because the greeting is a prayer. If the Almighty answers that prayer and gives them the peace, they will be at peace firstly with the Almighty, and that harm in your direction will stop. Based on what? Your prayer for them. But we don't look at the greeting like that. Imagine you see an enemy who's harmed you, says, Salamu Alaikum. And you really mean it, may peace be on you. If that peace is granted to that person, your problem is solved. So greet them, subhanallah. And if they were to greet you, respond, Wa alaykum as-salam. Yeah, it's okay. And you know, sometimes they might look at you and say, what are you greeting me for? <laughs> yeah, it happens. But when someone harms you and you have a moment within yourself later on or at that same time to think what your connection is with that person, the Almighty made them exactly as He made you. Nothing was given to you above them in terms of being born and created, subhanallah. You were born, they were born. You came to this world, they came to this world. The Almighty made you, He made them. He decided you're going to have parents, they're also going to have parents. And whatever upbringing they had might have differed slightly because now the role of outside human beings or other human beings, parents or anyone else, the environment, your friends, play a, that role plays a big, big... In fact, that plays a big role in the lives of people. They may have changed... If you can think for a moment, the maker is the same. The one who made you, the one who made me is the same. So just like if I shared the same parents, and it's my sibling, real sibling, one mother, one father, there is a certain connection. And I do know many families are broken. Broken meaning we've become so materialistic and sometimes we've become so selfish that we have big issues when we know they can be resolved. So the Almighty says in the Quran in more than one place, the reward is with those who can bear patience and forgive, although it's your right not to forgive. If someone does wrong to you, it's your right not to forgive them. You have a right not to forgive them. But guess what? You're taught that when you don't forgive them, it's okay, but you're holding it. For when? For the Day of Judgment. So when you're holding it, it's a burden. It's on your shoulder. You hold another one on your shoulder. You hold another one on your shoulder. And what happens? When the Prophet ﷺ was protected from that which would crack his back. We would be from among those whose backs would be cracked a long time back. We hold so much. Wait. Learn to forgive. When you forgive, you've re actually released yourself before everyone else. I promise you, you've released yourself. And people say, this one, I'm never going to forgive them. Never. Impossible. If only you knew what they did to me. Do you know what? If they owe you a million pounds, please, you don't need to forgive them for that million. You can keep on asking it from them. Perhaps you might get it from their inheritance. May Allah grant us ease. But you can forgive to say, listen, it's okay. I, I will keep on following it, but I hold no hatred in my heart. Because your heart should be so valuable that there shouldn't even be a single spot where hatred can rent. There's no space in my heart. No space in my heart for a, for a spot or no spot in my heart for hatred. No spot of hatred in that heart. It's too expensive. It's, it's a small heart. There's a lot supposed to be in it. Let it be positive. It is difficult to look at people who've harmed you with a positive eye. The day you do it, you'll feel the contentment. You'll feel the contentment. Release it. I know of a brother who was owed 500,000 US dollars. One of his friends robbed him. Straight robbery. And I told this brother many years ago, my brother... Allah will give you more than 10 times what was taken away from you. That's the promise of Allah. Yes, you may keep the claim, hold the claim, but just release it in your heart. Say, look, you know what? If it comes, alhamdulillah, I'm going to pursue it. Not like I'm not. You could pursue it strongly as well, but with respect. And don't hold it in your heart knowing that, you know what? Allah's going to give me. I promise you, the brother today has more than the 10 times that I had told him because obviously Allah is even more merciful. I know of brothers and sisters who have lost things in their lives. I'll give you one example. Several years ago, I met a brother at the Johannesburg International Airport. He told me, I'm going for Umrah. Please pray for me. My entire business was burnt. 
totally burnt. And a lot more happened. And this was the business. And it was a very big business. I told him, my brother, if you are happy with what Allah has chosen for you, Allah will replace, Allah will replace what He has taken away from you with much better. Two years later, how many years later? I met him, the same brother, at a masjid. He told me, do you remember me? I said, the face is quite familiar. He said, I'm the brother who met you two years back, and I told you that we, my factory was burnt, my business was burnt completely. He said, it's been two years, and guess what? We have renovated, we have gone back, and now it is double the size with the latest technology, and our production is almost ten times more. Why? Because you didn't close yourself in a shell and you didn't just depress yourself and stay at home and not meet anyone. But you get up and you face the challenges of the world. We all will. You have to get up in the morning, have your bath, dress up, look at yourself, feel good. Dress up for yourself, not for someone else. I'm dressing up because I want to feel good. Subhanallah. Can I tell you something very, very interesting? Very interesting. You're not going to believe I'm going to have. I'm going to say this. The underwear that you have says a lot about who you are. Do you know that? Wow, I think a lot of the uncles are just looking at me. Did you just say that? <laughs> I did, I did. When you take pride in what you have for yourself, you feel a better person. You're wearing something that really you feel good with. It, it will really boost you. Try it out, guys. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. I don't think anyone would have told you that such a platform. But it's a motivational evening. At least I've motivated you to do one thing. <laughs> Take a look at yourself, what you eat. Subhanallah. It builds you. You are what you eat. Make sure that you don't just look at food and say, right, it's yummy, let me eat all of it. No. Moderation. When you're young, you can do that. As you grow older, make sure you're exercising. Spend time with your body, with yourself. It will really protect your mind from dwindling and from falling into negativity. Look after yourself. Be healthy. Drink water. Subhanallah. Say Bismillah in the name of Allah, the one who gave you the food. When, when we speak of halal and tayyib, we're talking about two aspects of food and our living that not only is permissible because of what it is, but if it is something that you used to be living, for example, you're having chicken, you're having beef, you're having lamb, do you know that the concern within you about how that particular animal or bird was treated prior to it being slaughtered for consumption purposes is also a part of the duty that we have? I don't just munch and say, wow, that was nice. But that chicken, do you know how they kept it? Subhanallah. Show an interest in that a little bit. Subhanallah. You might eat a little bit less of that. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah grant us goodness. But in a nutshell, eat healthy. You will think positive. Mix with positive people. And if there are negative people, you have to be a positive energy for them by speaking positive. And when does that positivity stop? It doesn't stop. It keeps on going until the day you die. So I was saying, if someone is ill, terminally ill, for example, you have to give them hope. And that hope is divided into two. Listen, you either get cured, so you're a winner, and Allah's blessed you, or it either becomes worse and you die. But you die with a smile and you die hoping for Jannah, and you die knowing that Jannah is yours because you were patient. You can never be going to a bad place. Recently, I've given this example I'm about to give a few times, and... I found it very beneficial. It's a reminder for myself. And I want to repeat it here for those who may not have heard it. You see, we all were born, mashallah, tabarakallah, via our mothers. Fathers played a role. Mothers are the ones who gave birth to us. May Allah grant them ease and goodness and barakah and rahmah and sakina and every form of blessing. Amen. As we were in this womb, we were very little. Very little. We grew. As we grew, initially, we had the whole ocean to swim in, right? 
They call it, I think, the amniotic fluid, okay? It was all ours. Everything was mine. Khalas. I was swimming from one corner to the other, the other corner, this corner to that corner, here, there, and it was all mine. Huge. That was my world. To me, there's nothing. That's it. It was just that. What happened? A little while later, I started growing. When I started growing, the place became a little bit smaller, okay? To me, that's everything. It was still all mine. I, I must have enjoyed some of what my mum ate. Unfortunately, I can't remember. But I'm sure when she had the lovely chocolates, I must have said, Oh, this tastes really nice. You know, this tastes really nice. And then when, if I heard a sound or something, whatever happened, happened. As I grew, I'm sure our mums became happier and happier. Because why? We started kicking. It's a sign of, okay, things seem to be normal here. And as you grew, what happened? it became smaller and smaller for you. And the worry and the concern with your mother became more and more until a day came when you could not move much. Right? Now, what do you think? Pause for a moment. In life, you're young. When you're young, everything looks big. I remember when we were young, walking down the street was like running a marathon. And now, when you stand up, you can see the end of the street just like that. And it feels like it's nothing. But when we were young, it all seemed to be so big and so large, subhanAllah. As you grow older, things become a little bit smaller. And then you're told, you know, people live on average between 60, 70, perhaps maybe to 80 years. So when you're 30, you still say, I've got a life ahead of me. When you're 40, mashallah, tabarakallah. The minute you clock 70 and your legs start paining in a way that now there's no going back. It's the pain is going to be now forever, maybe. May Allah grant us all cure. Say Amin. You never know when is the moment of acceptance. Amin. May Allah grant all those who are struggling, suffering with their health, cure, shifa. Amin. So, as you grow older, what happens? You start feeling the pains. Then you need the walking stick. Then you cannot walk. Then you know things are not getting better, they're getting worse. And what happens? If you have conviction in your heart, you go back to the day you were in the womb and you couldn't move anymore. You thought there's nothing to come, that's it, I'm about to go, there's death. But you didn't realize there is a small membrane, maybe an inch, a little bit more than an inch sometimes, of a membrane between you and what you think is everything and the real world out there. What was the gap between you in the womb and the rest of the people outside that womb? A little membrane, the belly, that's it. And suddenly when you thought that's the end of everything, boom, you were born into reality. You came out and you said, whoa, whoa. You forgot. It was so different, so different that you totally forgot everything connected to anything that happened before. Can anyone remember those chocolates when your mom used to eat them and you used to say, hey, this tastes really nice. I hope I have it again sometime in the future. Can you remember that? Anyone remember? No, not even I. Okay? I don't remember. But what happened? When you came out, you said, Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? I just thought everything was done. It took a minute, five minutes, a little bit longer, less. In some cases, a very short time. You came out and everything was absolutely amazing. Guess what? Your death is something similar. There is a little barrier, membrane, between you and the hereafter. You will get there and you will see, whoa, whoa, wow, what is this? To the degree that perhaps you may never remember things that happened before, except that which Allah wants you to remember. That's why when little kids say, going back to that Lamborghini, because we saw two of them on the road today, okay? When the kids say, when I go to Jannah, I want a Lamborghini. And I say, that's going to be the worst thing in Jannah. You won't even remember this thing here when you get there. Because it's going to be so wow. That side. Subhanallah. You see your husband and you say, ah, subhanallah. Why? He's the perfect look, the perfect attitude, the top person, the top this, the top. Everything is not 90%, but 100% to your liking. You're thinking tall and suddenly, ooh. You're thinking short and suddenly, ooh, you know, as you're thinking, he's moving. And as whatever's happening to you, that's what's happening there. 
and for him, he is however he believes he is. I don't even know. I can't even describe it. I just know فيها ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر. In it, there will be that which no ears have ever heard of, no eyes have ever seen, no one has ever thought about. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, why are we so scared? It's just like when a woman is expecting. May Allah make it easy for all the expectant mothers. And all those who don't have children, may Allah bless them with offspring who will be the coolness of their eyes. Say Ameen. There is a concern, there is a worry, right? What is the worry? That worry is, I wonder how I'm going to be giving birth, especially if it's the first time. And even if it's the second and the third and the tenth, there is still that worry. It's close to death. The pain is severe. They've almost gotten to death. And suddenly there is another life. There is another life. Sometimes two if you're lucky. And if you're very lucky, three. I hope you have help, mashallah. May Allah grant us goodness. So imagine the pain, the difficulty, the hardship. Trust me, that anxiety. Sometimes we have it when we're not even pregnant because we're thinking of what's going to happen when I die. <laughs> have you tried? If you're trying, you need to know something and memorize it tonight. Your Lord is the most kind, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, the most loving, the most beneficent. It's impossible for Him to let you down. Impossible. If you're trying and you're becoming a better person every day, you're heading in the right direction. There's no need for you. There's no need for you to, to become doomed at what might have happened sometime in the past in your life or a sin you may commit even in the future. For as long as you know, it was your human weakness that made you fall, not your defiance of your maker. Those who commit sin and they are believers, they don't commit sin because the Almighty said, don't do it, so I'm going to defy him and show him, who are you? I'm going to do it. A'udhu billah. None of us do that. If that sin is committed, it's due to the weakness of man, knowing, noting, acknowledging that according to the rule of the Almighty, I shouldn't be doing this. It was my weakness. Hence, we have something known as seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And guess what? Adam alayhi salam perhaps perpetrated an even bigger sin. When Allah told him, don't eat, he ate. Imagine. When Allah told him, don't eat, he ate. And Allah told him personally, don't eat, he ate. But what happened? Immediately he says, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, if you're not going to forgive me, I really, we're going to be losers. If I say that, why should I doubt the mercy of Allah? Why? That's another trap of shaitan. A bigger sin than the sins you've committed is when shaitan makes you think your Lord's not going to forgive you. A bigger sin than the sins you've committed is when shaitan tells you your Lord is not going to forgive you. That's an even bigger sin. Do you know why? Then you haven't even recognized your Lord who tells you لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِن رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He forgives and will forgive every single sin for as long as you seek that forgiveness. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to keep seeking forgiveness every day. He used to seek that forgiveness without needing it. But I think days pass when we don't seek forgiveness. May Allah strengthen us. May He make us from those who realize the mercy of the Almighty. So keep trying, inshallah, my brothers and sisters, learn to help one another, learn to have a positive outlook, inshallah, and keep going. It's not all doom and gloom. We keep trying. Allah knows the circumstances within which we are living. Allah knows what pressure society has placed on us. Allah knows the challenges we're facing, not only globally, but in our own societies and communities. And Allah's not going to let us down. But we should try our best not to let ourselves down as well. Wherever you faltered, come on. If you're weak with your daily prayers, strengthen yourself. Talk to the Almighty. Tell Him, I want to become strong. Help me. And don't just say help me and then walk in another direction. But then try. That was my message for you today. Try and keep trying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Really, we need to reach out to so many who are struggling and suffering. 
My brothers and sisters, once again, I'm so delighted to have been here. I've overshot my time. I've spoken for about 40 minutes. I think it's okay. And uh, I really pray that Allah grant me the guidance and every one of us and Allah open our doors so that we can reach out to one another and keep each other's candles lit by the will of Allah. I believe we all have candles and these candles are lit. None of them are extinguished. But it's up to us to keep it lit and to encourage each other not to let that negative wind blow to the degree that the whole candle is gone. The whole flame is gone. But rather, if it blows, you quickly put your hand. You quickly put something to make sure that it doesn't blow out completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullah.